Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Software architecture, design, and development can feel overwhelming, especially if you're new to it. What should you focus on? Different languages, libraries, or frameworks? Well, after over 20 years of writing line of business and enterprise type systems, here are five pieces of advice I'd give my younger self. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So for some context, everything I'm referring to is my experience in line of business and enterprise style apps, because that's where it's been over the last 20 years. However, that's not to say that this advice doesn't really apply if you live in gaming or low level or any kind of dev tools, libraries, and frameworks, it may apply there. But again, for me, this is all about line of business and enterprise style apps. So the first piece of advice is actually pretty straightforward, which is really understand business in the domains that you're in. And if you experience and get to work in various different domains like I have, which is tr various forms of transportation, distribution, accounting, uh, manufacturing, you kind of get a broader sense of just how businesses run and how those different uh, domains work. And there is kind of a thread that goes through them. I say this all the time, this goes back to 2020, but I post something similar to this all the time, which is really the best developers, again, writing enterprise and line of business style apps, are the ones that are equally savvy in business as they are technical. And there's this fine balance of, of kind of which one sometimes they're, they're actually have better skills at. Um, and some, most of the time, actually, I'd say kind of the top few people that I know, they're high level at both. They are a high level technically as a developer, as a software designer, architect, but as well, they really, really understand business and they're business savvy. So my first piece of advice to my younger self is don't get entirely caught up on the technical side. Yes, it matters. You're a developer. You need to understand how to write code and some of the fundamental things that I'll be talking about in a minute. But don't get entirely caught up on it. You're writing line of business or enterprise type systems. You need to understand the business that you're writing software for. So the second piece of advice that really kind of is a thread to the first one here is that realizing that a system is kind of compartmentalized into different logical boundaries. And within those boundaries are the capabilities that your system provides. It's the workflows, kind of the business processes. I'm not talking about, yes, there are some boundaries that are strictly technical crud, but when you're really in the heart of a system, it's about capabilities. It's what is the actual value of the system? What's it trying to provide? And those are business capabilities. So understanding kind of the core, the landscape of the system that you're actually building, and there's different parts to it, and they have different values. So if you're new into a domain that you've never experienced before, this can be really difficult. And my analogy here is like it's kind of going into a dark room with just a flashlight. You kind of have to flash that light around to kind of see more of the room, more of the landscape to get a deeper understanding. And that's what kind of relates to the first one is that if you understand business, you can ask the right questions. You could kind of see that landscape and you can see where the business processes um, kind of reside, what kicks off what, because they're often finite, but not everything is created equal. So within domain-driven design, the concept of language and a bounded context is one thing I wish I would have told myself or educated myself earlier in my career. So the advice to my younger self related to a bounded context is focus on business capabilities. Talk to the business, understand the business. It's not so much about crud and entities, it's about business capabilities. So the third piece of advice is to fundamentally understand coupling and cohesion. So Ian Cooper posted this, uh, a tweet a while ago, where are saying that he increasingly wondering if architecture is mostly just about coupling trade-offs. Uh, coupling makes change harder, but some coupling is necessary to provide functionality. For this context, what are the taxes to get the smallest possible coupling and what are the trade-offs? Dead on. To me, coupling and cohesion are kind of this push-pull where you're trying to find that balance. And if you really fundamentally understand coupling and cohesion, in terms of software architecture and design, it gives you kind of that center point to try to decide where those trade-offs are because everything is about trade-offs. You want high cohesion, you want low coupling. That's easier said than done. So if you fundamentally and deeply understand it, it makes kind of guiding these decisions and these trade-offs 
based on business requirements a lot easier. A lot of the videos that I post on YouTube, while I might not say it, are directly related to coupling, cohesion, or both. So the advice to my younger self is understand it. Understand afferent and efferent coupling, understand informational and functional cohesion. Complexity can be hard to manage. I get it, especially if you're in an inherently complex domain. But don't make it even worse on yourself by adding unneeded technical complexity because you decided that you found some new library framework or concept that you think is a solution to every problem that ever existed. Complexity also relates to two things I already talked about, logical boundaries and coupling and cohesion. You don't wanna create a giant turd pile. Really what you're end up gonna try to do is create smaller turd piles. Smaller turd piles allow you to tame and isolate that complexity. As much as you think the system that you're building is gonna be some grandiose, gold-plated, wonderful system, the reality of it is it probably isn't. And instead of bringing, building a giant turd pile, rather, if you have these smaller turd piles, you can make localized changes about maybe something doesn't quite feel right at how something's modeled, or maybe we need upgrade technology here, or maybe we need to do something different. It's much easier to do that with a smaller turd pile than a large turd pile. So the advice I'd give my younger self related to complexity is try to isolate it, understand it the best you can, domain complexity, but do not, do not add unneeded technical complexity because of what ifs or some shiny new library or framework that you think is gonna solve every problem. So the last piece of advice I'd give my younger self is to know what you don't know. So this is from Dunning-Kruger Effect, which the idea here is as you gain a little bit of competence, your confidence goes through the roof. So that's kind of illustrated with this peak of Mount Stupid. And this is really not a great place to be because this is expert beginner. You've gained a little bit of knowledge, so you think you know everything about that topic. But as you gain more knowledge, more competence, you realize how little there is to, that you know. Again, you, at this point, you know what you don't know. There's this whole other world of other things that you can't even fathom about. And that's great because you know kind of where your limits lie and you know that you need to either investigate more, you don't know all the trade-offs to make a decision, especially related to architecture or design or a framework or a library or some type of concept. So the biggest thing for me is to not be at peak amount stupid, but be in that, unfortunately, that term of valley of despair, because at that, that point, you know what you don't know. So the advice to my younger self is just don't take yourself too seriously. There's gonna be so many things that you just don't know. You're not gonna be an expert in everything and that's okay. But try to get to the point where just you have a, a big enough landscape of information that you know what you don't know. So these are the five things that I thought of that I think that would have helped me if I knew earlier in my career. If these resonate with you, if you have any other thoughts, make sure to leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.